in the beginning of the coronavirus pandemic, a lot of uh, meatpacking plants were very, very concerned uh, about meat shortages. At least that that's that's what they were telling the White House. Uh, that's why Donald Trump, of course, had signed an executive order to keep people in these meat packing plants working. We find out, however, thanks to new information, that there were uh, there was actually no evidence of any sort of impending meat shortages, and that really that excuse was being used so that we could continue to sell meat to China. So let me give you the details. This is from a report in Common Dreams. Um, They said that, of course, um, according to the New York Times and USA Today, the industry was lying about the threat of shortages in order to maintain their large exports towards overseas markets. According to uh, labor journalist Stephen Greenhouse, writing, it was a fake meat shortage. Uh, Tony, uh, water, Food and Water Watch senior lobbyist Tony Corbo told the New York Times that the meat companies were saying that the sky is falling and it really wasn't. It wasn't that there was not enough supply. It was that the supply was being sent abroad. So now understand, I, I talked about this on, on the show before, how you know uh, Donald Trump, again, had issued this executive order to keep these meat plant uh, meat packing plants going, even though you had workers, thousands of workers getting coronavirus, falling ill, and not being able to, uh, you know, go to work uh, or get medical care or anything like that. And so that was a major issue. And so they lobbied, and and, and they were able to get that uh, to to get that special you know, uh, basically permission to continue operating at a profit. And so that's the problem here, right? In fact, numbers uh, from the U.S. Department of Agriculture showed the industry had exported a record amount of pork uh, to China in April, 129,000 tons, even as the industry was saying, oh, my God, look at how many shortage, how, uh, look, look, we're going to have a shortage. We need exemptions to the COVID-19 restrictions. We need exemptions. We need exemptions. We're going to run out of meat. Oh, yeah, we just sold 129,000 tons to China. Now, the Times reported, quote, after slaughterhouses in several states were closed when thousands of workers tested positive and dozens died, the industry publicly lobbied the Trump administration to intervene with state and local officials or risk major meat shortages across American grocery stores. Indeed, some retailers put limits on the amount of meat customers could buy. I know because that happened here. You know, you can only buy so much hamburger. You can only buy so many steaks or, or, or whatever. And so I've seen that. Uh, you also had, <clears throat> however, uh, as, as a good example of this, the, the limits, right? You even had Wendy's that ran out of fast food, that ran out of hamburger, right? So I remember seeing that as well. And so they're claiming throughout all this, oh, we're running out of meat. We need exemptions. While again, they're sending all this meat elsewhere. It's insane. The meat packers, including Smithfield, which uh, which is China's largest pork producer, bought in 2013, did not emphasize, at least not publicly, that keeping the plants open would protect their long-term investments in exporting to a country that they say is vital to their growth. Now, Ben Lilliston, a co-executive director of the Institute for Agriculture and Trade Policy, uh, told USA Today that the new data was unsurprising. No kidding. Really? Oh, that a corporation would lie and endanger the health of workers so that they can continue to make a profit. By the way, when all of this is happening, you also had a gigantic spike in food prices. I don't believe that's recovered right now. In fact, I think we're still paying more for food, even though a lot of these plants continue to keep running and exporting meat and making lots and lots of money from it. Manufactured shortage, everyone. And of course, what did we do? We fell for it. Corporations, man, they will do anything, anything to make an extra buck lie to the government, lie to the people, endanger their employees, uh, you know, 
have some of them die because they don't care about their workers, put them in unsafe conditions. And they're expecting us to be okay with the states reopening and sending people back to work. Now, I read an article in Forbes, believe it or not, <laughs> uh, but it was a good article uh, that says the blame for the reopening for, for the spike in coronavirus cases is not the state's fault. It's the federal government's fault. Now, you might think, well, now, wait a minute here. Uh, you saying that it's uh, not Ron DeSantis's fault? No, it partly is, right? But here's the other thing. State governments aren't able to spend money like the federal government does. A, a lot of them have balanced budget amendments, thanks to Republicans. And so their budgets, look, they have no, you know, decreasing tax revenues, increased costs in taking care of COVID patients uh, and all that extra stuff. They don't have the money. And so the federal government is... Uh, decides that they're not going to help. Donald Trump says, you're not going to get any help. Mitch McConnell says, screw you, states. We're going to let you go bankrupt. We don't care. The only option for them is to open up, to force the states to open up so that people don't, for one, draw unemployment benefits, right? Uh, which part of it comes to state from the state, but also part of it comes from a federal benefit thanks to the CARES Act. That's the extra $600 a week. Republicans don't want anybody taking that money. And so you force people back to work by not helping the states, force them to open up, and you can end that federal benefit right now. The number of people you can reduce that federal uh, th that are getting that federal benefit. You can cut it down significantly by forcing the states to open up. Of course, the result is that you have a coronavirus spike. Now, I kept mistakenly calling it the second wave, but in reality... According to Dr. Fauci, we're not even done with the first one. And so right now, it, we haven't had, we haven't flattened the curve. What we did is just we went up and now we're just kind of steady. There, There is no down. We didn't go back down. We're steady. Now in prisons, you had an increase of about 73% of uh, coronavirus cases. So you had a gi gigantic spike there. As you have protesters and you, and you have uh, conditions that are basically breeding grounds for this virus. And you have, you know, people in prisons that are not prepared for this. Uh, you have, you know, uh, prison companies and, and, and prison uh, facilities that are not set up for any of this stuff to deal with coronavirus, to deal with a pandemic. And so, of course, you're going to see a gigantic spike. It's not surprising at all that the federal government hasn't helped at all because the federal government right now is run by monsters. And that's what this is. And this is another example. You have these monstrous people that are being lobbied by these gigantic corporations in order to put people at risk, in order for them to make an extra buck, while also screwing us over when it came to food prices and using these scaremongering tactics on the American people. It really is absolutely disgusting with these corporations, what these companies are allowed to get with, uh, get away with. Hey guys, hopefully you enjoyed that free video. Now I'm going to have to ask you a favor between the uh, demonetization and the YouTube algorithm messing around with view counts, etc. We're having a hard time adjusting to the new YouTube reality, which is where you guys come in. See, we have a Patreon, patreon.com slash TYTNation set up to help us rely on the, you guys, the viewers, instead of big corporate ads. Look, you know the show. You know how I'm not in favor of big corporations anyway. So help us transition away from relying on the ad model to pay the bills and sign up to be a patron, patreon.com slash TYTNation. That goes a long way to help us keep the lights on. And you guys will know that you're supporting independent progressive media.